A lot of people new to amateur radio say they have difficulty in getting contacts. It might be foundation license holders who blame their 10 watt output limit. Or more experienced people who say the band conditions have been their worst in all their years of operating. I've been through three sunspot troughs and every time I've heard people say that, including those licensed a lot longer than me. The good news is there's operating techniques that can help improve your on-air success. Maybe they're new to you, or if you're an old timer, you could benefit from this reminder. In this video, I'll discuss the four main ways of getting contacts. I'll also talk about information sources and give you some handy links. The first thing to do is tune the bands, getting an idea of the conditions, where stations are, and whether propagation is good or bad. During the day, seven and 14 megahertz are good places to start whereas at night, 3.5 and 7 are good. As for the distances you'll work, generally speaking, if you want more than 1,000 kilometres, then 14 megahertz and possibly higher is good, whereas for shorter distances of 1,000 kilometres or less, then 3.5 and 7 megahertz offer the best opportunities. Once you've found an active band, the next thing is active listening. Tune slowly, stopping even on weaker signals. Your object is to try and find stations calling CQ. When you do, pause, take down their call sign, make sure it's right, and when they finish, give them a call. With any luck, they'll come back to you. But if they don't, and they come back to someone else, don't touch that dial. Keep listening. You never know, they might have heard you underneath the station that they called, or the calling station might also have heard you and call you in a bit later on. VK1DA Portable, VK3YE Portable. VK3 Yankee Echo, VK3 Yankee Echo Portable. Uh, yeah, very good, VK3 YE, VK1DA Portable. This is the right for it. It's also worth listening for the contact to see how fast it is. If it's a fast paced style of operating, it's worth hanging around for their next CQ call and then you can reply and hopefully get a contact. What if the station calling didn't come back to you or anyone else? There's no harm in giving a quick second call. They might not have adjusted their receiver properly the first time. What if the station calling CQ keeps coming back to others and you don't seem to be getting a look in? Don't worry, take down their frequency and occasionally come back to it. Conditions may well have changed or there might be a lot fewer stations calling and then you might have a better chance. If after numerous calls they don't hear you, then it's possibly time to give up. They might have a very high local noise level, or there might even be something wrong with your end. Keep tuning the band and listen for other stations, possibly stronger, calling CQ, that you'll have better success with. Maybe you've tuned the band several times and you can't hear anyone calling CQ. The next thing, active listening again, is to tune the band, this time listening for conversations about to finish. They may present opportunities. If you call one of the stations involved, then the chances are you'll get a contact out of it. That's a highly successful approach, and I've found is successful for the majority of contacts that I make, much more so than calling CQ. The main thing with tail ending is make sure that when you call, the contact really is finished. There can be some contacts that don't properly finish, and you might be transmitting over the top of someone. That's not a good approach. It does take a lot of listening and skill to get it right, but eventually you will. When you make your call, just do a short call. The station you're calling, followed by your call sign. Make it nice and slow, so they can hear it clearly. 
and are likely to get it right first time. So you've tuned across the band and haven't heard any stations calling CQ. Neither have you heard stations about to finish their contact. The third thing you should do is call CQ yourself. First off, pick a frequency. Make sure it's not in use. Ask if you're unsure and then go ahead with your CQ calls. In relation to picking a frequency, there's obviously your license regulations as well as a voluntary band plan agreement in many countries. It makes sense to stick to the band plan, particularly if you're using one of the less popular modes. Digital modes, for instance, have only narrow segments that they operate on and if you're, say, calling CQ on PSK31, well away from the normal PSK31 segment, then it's very unlikely that many PSK31 operators will be there to hear your call. Similarly, on SSB, let's say that you picked 28.9 megahertz to call CQ on 10 meters. There's nothing wrong with that frequency. It might be compliant with your license conditions. It might also be compliant with a band plan, but as an experienced operator knows, there's not a lot of activity up on 28.9. Just about all the SSB activity on 10 meters is around 28.4, 28.5, maybe even up to 28.6 if it's busy, like during a contest. These are the sorts of things you only know through experience and listening. Okay, so we've picked a clear frequency well away from other strong signals. You've asked if it's in use, now you can proceed with a call. A typical CQ call might be something like this. CQ, 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 CQ. This is VK3YE, Victor Kilo 3 Yankee Echo. VK3YE, calling CQ, 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 VK3YE. Victor Kilo 3 Yankee Echo VK3YE calling CQ and listening. Now your call might be longer or shorter than that depending on conditions. If there's a lot of stations around then you might wish to make the call shorter. Conversely if there's hardly anyone on the band or you might even be the only one then you can make it longer but not too long, otherwise the stations who would be answering you might fall asleep before they get to pick up the microphone. Don't expect stations to give you a reply on your first call. Don't give up before you've made a fair fist of it. That means putting out 15 to 20 minutes worth of CQ calls. You might want to periodically tune across the band in the interim in case another station has popped up on another frequency calling CQ. You wouldn't want the situation where you were calling CQ over here, another station was calling CQ over there, and you never heard each other because you weren't listening at the right time. Another thing I suggest is, unless you really do want to work stations outside your country or continent, is do not call CQDX. There is a case a little while ago when I heard someone who I think was fairly new calling CQDX. It was a time of day and band conditions were not conducive to long distance operating on the band he was using. And his 10 watt power limit wouldn't have helped either. He was calling CQ DX for ages and not getting a contact. It was only when a cheeky local station ignored the DX bit and gave him a call anyway did he have a successful contact. There is something about calling CQ that I want to leave you with. It's from Solder Smoke, a book I recently reviewed by Bill Mira N2CQR. Amateur radio may be unique in what I guess we could call its culture of CQ. CQ is telegraphic shorthand for a general call to any station. It's the ham radio way of shouting, hey, is there anyone out there who wants to talk? Almost anywhere else in human society, a stranger heard shouting this question would raise our eyebrows and get suspicious. The response would probably be, well, who are you? Why are you seeking a conversation in this way? And what would you talk about? That's one of the things that makes ham radio special. Those questions are never asked. When he hears a CQ, the other ham knows the answers. 
the caller is a fellow radio amateur. He's calling CQ because that's what we do. Okay, so you've tuned the band and not heard any CQ calls. There are no contacts to tail end and no responses to your CQ calls. The next approach to getting contacts, and one that should be applied cautiously, is to break in to an existing contact already going. Now, you have to pick the contacts to break in, and some you should refrain from doing so. For instance, a contact that's on a detailed subject that you can't contribute anything to should probably be avoided, at least as a break-in contact. Although, those sorts of contacts are really interesting just to listen. On the other hand, if the stations are casually asking about signal reports, maybe they've put up a new antenna, trying a new transceiver or microphone, then they'd very likely welcome your input. Similar also is if they're talking about a topic that you can add something to and contribute, possibly even answering a question that was posed. Another case where it's okay to break in is a casual group. In fact, they might even invite people to break in on the philosophy that the more the merrier. Though personally, I find contacts with only two or three people in them are the most enjoyable. Big groups can get a bit unwieldy and can spend more time discussing who is in the contact or who to pass it around to next than the actual topic at hand. When you break in, never say break or break break unless it's an emergency. Be careful with your timing as well. You don't want to be transmitting over the top of someone else. Pick your timing and then slip in your call sign. Hopefully the stations on the air will have allowed enough time between overs to allow your call sign to be heard. But don't worry if they don't. We can all get so carried away in a contact that we pick up the microphone immediately rather than leaving a gap. In this video, I've discussed the main ways of getting HF contacts. These are basically one, tuning the band, listening for stations, calling CQ. Two, tuning the band, listening for contacts about to finish and then tail landing them. Three, calling CQ yourself. And four, where appropriate, breaking in to an existing contact. There's more details on some of those approaches in the links below. Or you can check out my ebook, Minimum QRP which has a whole chapter on operating and getting contacts. Although QRP is in the title, many of the techniques will also apply to those running 100 watts or more.